Hello dear students, welcome back to Biovidyalaya. I hope you all are doing very well. In our previous lecture video, we discussed about role of RB protein in cell cycle regulation. In this lecture video, we are going to discuss about role of P53 protein in cell cycle regulation. So, without further delay, let's get into today's class. So, let's see about P53 protein. P53 protein is also known as TP53. Its molecular weight is 53 kilo Dalton. Okay. That's why this protein is known as P53 protein. Okay. And this P53 protein is a tumor suppressor protein like our RB protein. That means um, this protein, this P53 protein is playing important role in the prevention of tumor formation. And loss of activity or the loss of function of this protein leads to the formation of cancer or tumor. And it is playing important role in DNA damage checkpoint. That is in G1 and G2 checkpoint. If there is any DNA damage um, or any other stress in a cell, then P53 uh, protein will become active and that will arrest the cell cycle or it will block the cell cycle progression. Okay. So, DNA damage block cell cycle progression. P53 playing important role in DNA damage checkpoint G1 and G2. And loss of activity of P53 cause cancer. Okay. So, you have to remember that in the case of tumor suppressor protein, loss of activity that will lead to the formation of tumor. In the case of uh, oncogene, okay, in the case of proto-oncogene, proto-oncogene, gain of function, gain of function will lead to the formation of tumor. Okay. So, loss of activity of P53 or loss of function of P53 cause cancer. P53 is a transcription factor and that regulates the uh, transcription of many target genes whose products are required for, the, uh, for DNA repair, cell growth arrest, apoptosis, senescence, etc. Okay, so P53 is a transcription factor that suppress tumor growth through regulation of dozens of target genes with diverse biological function like DNA repair, cell growth, apoptosis, etc. Okay, so mutation of this gene, mutation of this P53 gene will lead to the formation of tumor. Okay. So, this P53 gene is very essential for the cell. So, it is known as guardian of the cell or cellular gatekeeper. This is very important. You will get part B question based on this. Like which protein is known as uh, guardian of the cell. So, P53 is known as guardian of the cell or cellular gatekeeper. Okay. So, let's see how DNA damage arrests cell cycle in G1 and what is the role of P53. 
So, in normal cells, P53 is inactivated by MDM2 protein that is also known as E3 ubiquitin protein ligase MDM2 and cause proteosomal degradation of P53. Okay. So, in normal cells, that means the cell without any DNA damage, P53 is inactive. That is inactivated by P53. P53 is inactivated by MDM2. This MDM2 protein that will bind with P53 and then it will lead to the proteosomal degradation of P53. So, in normal cell, the concentration of P53 is low. Okay. And uh, here you have to remember that this MDM2 is E3 ubiquitin protein ligase. This e, uh, MDM2 is E3 ubiquitin protein ligase. This is important because sometimes you will get part B question. And MDM2 is a proto-oncogene. It is a proto-oncogene. That means overexpression or the gain of function of proto-oncogene will lead to the formation of cancer. Okay. So, you have to remember that uh, MDM2 is also known as E3 ubiquitin protein ligase and it is a proto-oncogene. Okay. Because you will get sometimes part B questions. Okay. MDM2 is an important negative regulator of P53 tumor suppressor. Because MDM2 function is to inactivate P53. So, it is a negative regulator. In case of any DNA damage in the cell, then protein kinase ATM will get activate and which in turn activate CHK2 kinase. What is the function of kinase enzyme? Phosphorylate target protein. So, this ATM and CHK together will phosphorylate P53. Okay. They together will P, uh, phosphorylate P53 in distinct site. Okay. So, MTM2 is not able to bind with P53. Okay. Now, P53 is active and the same time, this ATM, ATM can phosphorylate MDM2. So, this MDM2 will become inactive. So, it is not able to uh, bind with P53. Okay. M2M2 is inactive means it is not uh, no more um, cause proteosomal degradation of P53. Okay. So now what will happen? P53 concentration in the cell will increase. Okay. And this P53 will act like a transcription factor. It is an it is a transcription factor. And it will lead to the transcription of gene coding for P21 protein. So, synthesis of P21 protein. And this P21 protein will bind with G1 SCDK and SCDK complex. Then what will happen? This G1 SCDK and SCDK will become inactive. Okay. So, this uh, cyclin CDK complex is 
not able to phosphorylate rb protein okay if if uh, it is not able to phosphorylate rb protein then e2f the transcription factor e2f will not be free so transcription of s cyclic protein will not occur so cell cycle arrest cell cycle arrest okay so in case of dna dame protein kinase atm is activated which in turn activate chk2 kinase both phosphorylate p53 at distinct site in this way they prevent binding of mdm2 with p53 atm kinase can also cause inactivation of mdm2 by phosphorylating it p53 concentration will increase rapidly protein p53 stimulate transcription of gene encoding p21 p21 protein bind and inactivate g1 scdk and scdk complex arresting cell in g1 okay as we know that p53 is a transcription factor that will lead to the transcription of uh, genes coding for protein for cell cycle arrest apoptosis uh, dna repair etc so after cell cycle arrest what will happen dna damage repair will occur if uh, repairs done what will happen cell will divide normally and then it will complete cell cycle if suppose if the cell fails to repair its dna then what will happen cell dies by apoptosis to prevent mutated cell proliferation okay so it will prevent the formation of cancer so after all repair cell will divide normally uh, normally and complete cell cycle if it fails to repair cell dies by apoptosis to prevent mutated cell proliferation and cancer in case uh, p53 is mutated or there is no p53 in the cell what will happen the cell cycle arrest will not occur and uh, cell uh, cells with mutated genome will proliferate and then it will become cancer so in cells with mutated or lost p53 gene the rs does not occur at g1 and the cells with mutated genome proliferate and become cancer okay i think this is clear for you anyway i will explain this pathway one more time so just see this diagram in normal cell in normal cell p53 will get inactivated by mdm2 mdm2 uh, will bind with p53 and then it will cause proteosomal degradation of p53 okay so in normal cells uh, p53 concentration is low in damaged when da uh, dna become damaged what will happen a protein kinase known as atm will get activate and this atm further activate another kinase chk2 and this atm and chk2 together phosphorylate p53 in distinct place okay or distinct site so this p53 will undergo some conformation changes so mdm2 is not able to bind with p53 okay so yeah this mdm2 is not able to cause proteosomal degradation of p53 at the same time this atm can also phosphorylate mdm2 okay so this mdm2 will become inactive so this mdm2 is no more able to uh, bind with p53 
and this p53 is a transcription factor so it will lead to the transcription of gene coding for a protein p21 so synthesis of p21 protein okay and this p21 protein will bind with g1 as cdk and s cdk complex so this g1 s cdk and s cdk will become inactive so this inactivated cyclin cdk complex is not able to phosphorylate rb protein so the transcription factor e2f will not become free so it is, this e2f is not able to transcribe gene coding for s phase protein so cell cycle arrest in g1 okay so this is the pathway so here i am winding up this lecture video if you like this video and find it helpful then please click the like button share this video with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe this channel for getting more videos like this keep learning thank you